Want to learn the best, absolutely best way to store beans? Well, guess what? There isn't just one way. You have to tailor your storage to your family's needs. Let me show you. You know, when I started out prepping, the first thing I did was store rice and beans, right? That's what you're told to store for long term. And there's a reason for that. Together, they're pretty nutritious and beans and rice store very well if you store them correctly for a long, long time. And beans are good for you. They're a great source of fiber and nutrition. They can help keep your bowels regular uh, with actual heart disease and even some digestive illnesses. So, beans are good for you. But what did I do when I first started out? I did what everybody else does, which is get big buckets, get a big Mylar bag, you know, five gallon bag, fill them to the brim with beans, put in some oxygen tabs and seal them and put them in the bucket, right? And label when I did. Yeah, and I still have those buckets. We call them my apocalyptic buckets because the only time we're ever gonna use them if it is truly the end. So, I mean, having a huge buckets of beans is not the way I rotate through my food. Now, this might work for your family. Maybe you have a very large extended family that you make meals for a lot. Maybe this is the way you wanna store beans. That's fine. But I believe there's kind of three stages of storage, so to speak. Now the first one is, these beans come in a plastic bag. You just put them in a drawer or someplace dark in your pantry and they'll keep for two years just fine like that. You don't have to do anything with them. So if you're rotating through your beans, Regularly, this is the way to do it. And I like getting, okay, I should explain, when I talked about a bean bucket, it's really a legume bucket, because I'm including peas too. Um, peas and beans are legumes. But this one has a ham flavoring packet in it too, so I like to have these. So, I have these in my drawer, I can rotate through, and they keep for two years or so. But if I want to extend the storage, this is what I do. Now, that second way, this is where I keep my beans for about five years in storage. Take a package, cut off one little corner like that, put it in my bag. And I really like these bags and they're pretty reasonable. I think you get 200 at once, 500. Anyway, it's only... 13 cents a piece, really, when you do the math. And I've got a link down below to them. Okay. So you put it in there. If you want, you can also add an oxygen absorber. But you don't have to. It's a tight space for me to get back here. But let's turn it on. Let's see. It is dry stuff. So then we're just going to put our bag in. fast process and there you have it okay and by doing that these beans will keep for five years just fine again I could stick them into a drawer or some kind of container that rodents can't get to and they will be fine for five years and for many families that's all you're planning ahead and you're rotating it through so just vacuum sealing in a bag, you don't even need the oxygen absorber, is a great way to prep your beans. Now, today though, I am going to be making up a bucket with some 
split peas because we love split pea soup. Right? Here's some ham beans, right? Great Northern White. Ooh, and who doesn't like black eyed peas? And my favorite, either 15 bean soup or 16 bean soup. And yes, they cheat too. They, it's 16 legumes, not just beans. And I love the little seasoning packet in these. So we are going to place these in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers so they'll keep for 10 plus years. Now the bags I'm using are the wallaby bags and these are 50 bags and they're two quarts. Kayleen from the Provident Preppers told me about these wallaby bags. I'm really impressed. They're very nice and thick and I love the packages that you can get stickers and oxygen absorbers just right for the size bag all in one bundle. And if you would like to try them out, I have my link down below and there's 10% off if it's a first time buyer. And if you're buying them again, if you use my discount, PP Save 5, you'll get five off. And it's free shipping for I think anything over $25. So love these bags, you don't buy the really cheap bags because your food will not last as long. And remember, your life could depend on how you store your food. This packet that I got didn't, but you want to make sure you have oxygen absorbers before you're starting this process. Now let's get started. I also like that the oxygen absorbers come, I think it's 10 to a packet. So you just make up 10 bags, you've used them all, and you don't have to worry about them getting exposed to air too long. This is really great. And these are 400 oxygen absorbers. First thing I do is just cut off a little, little corner, and then I put them in just like this into the bag. And now we're going to put them in our Mylar bag, two quart bag. Okay, we got it. Okay, so squish them in. Now let's try it up. Okay. I have this piece of wood. Put it on here. Take my iron, I'm going to go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, should be pretty good. Okay, and then I'm just going to give it one last, right, and let's do the other one. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, okay, back and forth. Now, we have a nicely sealed bag. We have our oxygen absorber in here. And then we're gonna wait 24 hours before we put this in the bucket. So we'll do one more here. Bag, we're putting in our oxygen absorber. There we go. And then we're gonna stick it in our bag. Shake it down a little. And then I like going like that. I'm putting it here. There we go. Our one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Okay, good. Just try over here. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. By Mississippi. Okay. There we go. It's another sealed bag. When you're making a number of these packages and they're different contents, make sure you label. It's easier if you attach the label first to the bag before you fill the bag. Now you'll notice I'm using a iron and a lot of people use a hair straightener. 
And at hair straightener, it looks really great, but look at me. Do I use a hair straightener? I don't think so. So I don't have one, but if you do, that's a great way to seal your Mylar packages also. Now, if you're really OCD and is afraid that your Mylar bag won't keep your beans long enough, you can always <laughs> vacuum pack them and then put them into your Mylar bag and seal them. I call that the overkill method. Now you might wonder, why do I store my beans in the original package? Everybody you see says dump them out. Well, it doesn't hurt at all. And on the package, it can have cooking instructions or recipes. And inside, sometimes there's a special little seasoning packet. So I like keeping them in the bag they come in. But how you store them is up to you. Now, I have one of each kind of the beans I showed you in here. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow, check the beans out, make sure it looks like the oxygen absorbers are working. And then I'm going to put on this lid. This is a regular lid, it's more of a permanent lid. And I'm using a used pastry bucket. Just a nice size where I'm going to be putting it in my prep room. I don't have room there for a big bucket. So this is what I'm using, but one of the things you want to make sure is you always have one of these, a bone wrench to, or as this calls it, much nicer, a pail opener. So you can get this lid off because it's really hard when it's sealed well. I actually, can you see a little tape here? I um, These are pretty cheap. I got a link down below. I buy them and uh, I attach them every so many buckets. That way I'll always have enough of these and be able to get into these buckets myself. However, if you're doing more of a rotational storage, you no, know, we're talking about that five year storage, then use a gamma lid. I have a link down below for that too. But the difference is this goes here. And yeah, it actually attaches and detaches from the bucket so you can get into it and you don't have to worry about that impossible lid to get off just about unless you have one of these so this is much nicer to use when you're using rotational regular prep stock now if you're really ocd and is afraid that your mylar bag won't keep your beans long enough you can always <laughs> vacuum pack them and then put them into your mylar bag and seal them i call that the overkill method. Now, in addition to those beans and buckets and in shelves, I do keep some canned beans because if I want to use beans fast, this is the way to go. Either this or some of my home canned beans downstairs because beans take time to rehydrate. Usually you leave them all night in water and then they're fine. So you figure about three cups of water to one cup beans. Now, when you're making beans, I just want to warn you, don't put in anything acidic while you're making them, like any vinegar or any tomatoes or anything. That could make them tough. You can add like a fourth a teaspoon of baking soda to your pot and that will help soften up your beans. But otherwise, don't even add your salt until you're ready to put them in your recipe. What do you do though if you're, you soak them all night and they're still brittle, you know, really hard. Well, then maybe they are too old. What might have happened is there was a leak in the bag or oxygen did get in or moisture was in the room. It wasn't at the right temperature. There's a lot of things that can happen. But if that happens, as long as the beans look okay, don't throw them out. Then it's time to grind them and make them into bean flour. So to sum this up, you need to store beans how it works for your family. Maybe you just buy beans and cans and rotate through the cans. That's great too. Or maybe you just keep them in the original package, put them in your pantry and use them within two years. That's fine, you're rotating through. Or maybe you prefer to use your vacuum sealer. That's great and these should keep for five years as long as they're in a dark place where there isn't a lot of moisture and it doesn't get too hot. Or maybe you want them for long-term, five to 25 years. 
and you want them in the size that you will actually use. So these little Mylar bags are perfect. This will make soup for the whole family and this is all the beans I need. That might work best for your family. I know it works great for mine. Or maybe you do have big buckets of beans. That's fine. If that works for your family, guess what? That is the best bean bucket for you. So be careful when you watch videos. Don't assume the way one person does it is best for you. We all have different situations. We live in different areas of the country. We have different uh, number of people in our household, different likes, different nutritional needs. And so you must come up with a method that works best for you. Now I'd love to hear, how do you store beans? Do you rotate through them? Do you have that big apocalyptic buckets of beans? Do you have the uh, cans of dried beans that you can get from the LDS store? How do you store your beans? Or do you just have canned beans that you buy from the store? Comment below. Watch the next video to find out, are beans and rice the perfect survival food?